Hello everyone, it's my pleasure and great honor to share with you this very important lecture about role of non-invasive imaging tests in patients with pulmonary hypertension. Our agenda will include the short introduction followed by role of echocardiography in diagnosis, role of echocardiography in risk assessment, and finally, role of echocardiography in follow-up. Let's start with the short introduction. The diagnostic approach to pulmonary hypertension is mainly focused on two tasks. The primary goal is to raise the early suspicion of pulmonary hypertension and ensure fast track referral to pulmonary hypertension centers in patients with high likelihood of pulmonary arterial hypertension, chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, or other forms of severe pulmonary hypertension. The second objective is to identify the underlying disease especially left heart disease and lung disease as well as comorbidities to ensure proper classification, risk assessment and treatment. The diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension is usually based on six parameters including the clinical presentation, ECG, non-invasive imaging tests, invasive assessment by right heart cath, labs, and others such as cardiopulmonary exercise test and pulmonary function test. In this lecture, we will focus on the non-invasive imaging tests, especially echocardiography and cardiac MRI. What is the role of echocardiography in diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension? When performed accurately, echocardiography provides comprehensive information on right ventricular and left ventricular function and morphology, valvular abnormalities, and it gives estimates of hemodynamic parameters. Independent of the underlying etiology, pulmonary hypertension leads to right ventricular pressure overload and dysfunction, which can be detected by echocardiography. Echocardiography is also a valuable tool with which we can detect the, the cause of suspected or confirmed pulmonary hypertension such as mid-systolic notching in the RVOT VTI may suggest precapillary pulmonary hypertension. The exercise induced increase in the pulmonary artery systolic pressure is mostly caused by diastolic left ventricular dysfunction. Echocardiography can help to differentiate between Group 2 pulmonary hypertension and other forms of pulmonary hypertension through evaluation of left ventricular systolic and diastolic function, left atrial size, left ventricular hypertrophy to rule out valvular heart disease as well as assessment of Doppler echocardiographic signs such as EE ratio and E over E prime ratio. Echocardiography can help to identify congenital heart disease, especially left to right shunt, including ASD, BDA, or anomalous pulmonary venous return. So, echocardiography is recommended by the European Society of Cardiology as the first line non invasive diagnostic investigation in patients with suspected pulmonary hypertension. What are the limitations of echocardiography? 
Echocardiography alone is insufficient to confirm the diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension, which requires right heart cath. Estimation of pulmonary artery systolic pressure based on the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity is not reliable in patients with pulmonary stenosis. Echocardiography can overestimate or underestimate pulmonary artery systolic pressure. Tricuspid regurgitation velocity may overestimate pulmonary artery systolic pressure in the following scenarios. Number one, in patients with high cardiac output, such as hepatic patients or patients with sickle cell disease, or in case of misinterpretation of tricuspid valve closure artifact for tricuspid regurgitation jet or re wrong measurement of the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity by measuring the bird, not the chin. Let's look for this example. The wrong measurement is labeled by the red arrow, which overestimate the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity, while the correct one is the blue arrow, which measures the actual or true peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity. So it is recommended to measure the chin, not the bird. Tricuspid regurgitation velocity may underestimate pulmonary artery systolic pressure in patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation or in case of incomplete envelope of tricuspid regurgitation velocity in continuous wave doubler, or if the continuous wave doubler is not parallel to the tricuspid regurgitation jet direction. So what is the diagnostic algorithm of pulmonary hypertension? We must pass through three steps. The first step is suspicion. Suspicion of pulmonary hypertension in patients with unexplained dyspnea. The second step is detection. Detection of pulmonary hypertension by non-invasive assessment in addition to the clinical evaluation, ECG, and the biomarkers. And finally, the third and the final step is confirmation using the invasive assessment by right heart cath. How to assess the probability of pulmonary hypertension? We assess the probability of pulmonary hypertension by looking for the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity and the additional echo signs of pulmonary hypertension. If the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity is 2.8 meter per second or less, without additional echo signs of pulmonary hypertension, then we have a low probability of pulmonary hypertension. If there is evidence of additional echo signs of pulmonary hypertension, then we have an intermediate probability of pulmonary hypertension. If the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity between 2.9 and 3.4 meter per second alone, this justify intermediate probability of pulmonary hypertension. While if the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity between 2.9 and 3.4 meter per second with evidence of additional echo signs of pulmonary hypertension, then we have a high probability of pulmonary hypertension. If the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity above 3.4 meter per second alone, this justify the high probability of pulmonary hypertension. We should notice that patient should be referred to a pulmonary hypertension center for further evaluation in the following situations. Number one, when an intermediate or high probability of pulmonary hypertension is established. Number two, in the presence of risk factors for pulmonary arterial hypertension 
or history of pulmonary embolism. What are the additional echo signs suggestive of pulmonary hypertension? The first uh, category of signs is the ventricles. We should compare the right ventricular and the left ventricular basal diameter. If the ratio above one, this is considered one of the additional echo signs suggestive of pulmonary hypertension. Number two, flattening of the interventricular uh, septum with D-shaped LV cavity in systole plus or minus diastole. Number three, the ratio between TAPSI and the systolic pulmonary artery uh, pressure less than 0.55, which denote RV pulmonary artery uncoupling. The second category of these signs in the pulmonary artery, we should assess the acceleration time obtained from RVOT if the acceleration time below 105 milliseconds and or mid systolic notching. This is considered a suggestive sign of pulmonary hypertension. Early diastolic pulmonary regurgitation velocity more than 2.2 meter per second and finally dilated pulmonary artery more than 2.5 centimeter the third and the final category of the echo signs suggestive of pulmonary hypertension is inferior vena cava and right atrium IVC diameter more than 2.1 centimeter with poor in respiratory collapse and the dilated right atrium above 18 centimeter square. We should notice that signs from at least two categories must be present to alter the level of echocardiographic probability of pulmonary hypertension. What is the role of echocardiography in risk assessment? Through evaluation of the right atrial size and evaluation of TAPSI to systolic pulmonary artery pressure ratio and by assessment of presence or absence of pericardial effusion, we can classify patients with pulmonary hypertension into low risk, intermediate risk and high risk. Cardiac MRI has a role as well in the risk assessment through evaluation of the right ventricular ejection fraction, stroke volume index, and finally, right ventricular end systolic volume index. What is the role of echocardiography in follow-up? Let's compare the role of echocardiography or cardiac MRI versus the role of right heart cath in follow-up of patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension. If we looked at the baseline assessment, we will find that echocardiography or cardiac MRI was given the same class of recommendation to right heart cath. Both were given a class one recommendation and the same is observed after three to six months in stable patients both were given a class 2p recommendation while if we assess three to six months after a change in the therapy cardiac mri and the echocardiography is superior to right heart cast Echocardiography or cardiac MRI was given class 1 recommendation while right heart cast is given only class 2A. And in case of clinical worsening, again, the echocardiography or cardiac MRI is superior to right heart cast. Echocardiography or cardiac MRI was given a class 1 recommendation while right heart cast was given only class 2A recommendation. So my final take home messages, 
Pulmonary hypertension is one of the most lethal disorders in cardiovascular medicine. Early detection and the diagnosis is important to timely refer for appropriate management. Echocardiography plays a crucial role, not only in diagnosis, but also in risk assessment and follow-up. Thank you so much.